to see this beautiful bright light. Notice the formation. Notice your form. And again with every inhale, connecting to the energy of interstellar. And as you walk into this light, tell me, who's there to greet you on the other side? At the moment, it's just a space. But what I've come from is under the water, almost like what you would imagine Grecian um, stones or ancient Mesopotamia, or the words I'm getting, like this enormous underground city. And Wonderful. There's so much purity and energy in the actual formation of the buildings that have been left behind. And that is what is connecting with interstellar. So I've actually come out of the water, through the water from the from the bottom where the sand is, and then the bright light was just going all the way through the water, through the water, through the sky, into the star system. And that star system is actually connected very deeply. They're saying that that transmission, those energy particles are embedded into the stone because the beings that came from that star system, they're telling me Lara, actually left their energy within the actual living structure of the stones. So they are using it like a transmitter. Like they're saying the way that we use crystals is transmitting and receiving in um, watches and computers. Mm -hmm. that, that is a, a crystallization in the actual structure of the stones. And it's like having a um, WhatsApp video or um, a FaceTime with interstellar and the rocks and the beings that lived on earth but came from Lyra so speaking of the beings that come or came from Lyra we know that there's many different star seeds many humans are wanting to find out what their um, what their what the alliance was where, where do they come from is that important for us to know? Well, <clears throat> what is important is for them to know that they came from many constellations and they brought their differences with them to this living library so that they could start new editions and have a huge library not just one book, but many books. And when we talk about a book, we talk about life and one story. And we wanted Earth to be this magnificent experiment of the beauty that came from all the constellations so that they could live in harmony with all their differences bringing all their character, all their essences, and live harmoniously one within and around the other. Well, so, thank you. Please go so, ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. 
So we say that it is important for people to know that, yes, they are different. There are many nations on earth now that feel different, do they not? Mm -hmm. And yet the differences are to be celebrated, not alienated. There is such a division that is taking place on earth at this time because of the differences and one is made to feel different or alienated from another. And yet those differences are the very ones that need to be celebrated. For all of you have got gems in your little treasure troves. And each gem is different. Each one has a different facet. Each one has a different color. And each one shines differently. And each one resonates differently. But we want to take you back to the stones under the water. When we spoke to you about it like being like a telephone exchange, like a transmitter and a receiver, all who are on the earth at the moment come from one receiver and from one huge transmitter. So we would like to ask the question, isn't it time to start looking at the similarities rather than concentrating on the differences? The similarities being the love of one's family, the love of humanity, the love of nature, and everything that that encompasses. For we think that when one is encouraged to look at another as the other having a heart, having families, having food in homes and love and start respecting one another, then the earth plane, this beautiful living library, will be able to open up their books as such. And what will the book say? Will it be in deficit or will it be in credit? This one spoke to you earlier about how she's busy proofreading her book, her story. And we'd like to take this time to ask everyone, how does their story stack up? Are they putting themselves in credit or in debit? We've spoken before of staying in one's lane. But how is the reader's lane looking? And we wish them to look at their lane, their story, with love. And as they see the love within themselves, they will automatically see the love within the other. But when they see lack in self, they will see lack in another. And that is why this is such an important time and an important message to let people know who or what they are. For when they know who they are, this incredible being from the Stella, how can they not be filled with wonder and awe of whom they truly are. Thank you for that. And I'm going to ask uh, all of us to go back to the rocks and, and being under in the ocean uh, there's so many different theories out there. There's so many different understandings of what the rocks hold. And I know that Jill and I were speaking about this this morning uh, when we were in a beautiful meditation group with Sue, that when we were at Sechmet's temple, we all saw different things. We all felt something different when we were in her room and we we um, were standing, connecting with her. How is it that rocks, 
statues, places, how is it that they hold a certain vibration? Because they are living beings. It is the structure and the makeup. It is how they came to be. And that is their job. It's like saying, but how does a pot hold water? The pot holds water. It is its job. It's the stone's job to hold the memory and to catalog it. They are the librarians. They are the holders of the information through the vibrational blueprint that they hold. As you and this one have a photonic structure, so do the rocks have these structures. So, <coughs> excuse me, we would like to remind you of the story of how this one met the keeper of the crystals. And he was gifted a meteorite. But the meteorite knew that it had to work with him. But if when it went to the laboratory and it was shown to be a meteorite, the keeper of the crystal wouldn't be able to afford to keep him. So he changed his composition. That is what a rock can do. It's almost like being what you term a shape shifter. And so they could not conclude that it was a meteorite. And so the keeper of the crystals was able to take him and have him in his shop, which he then exuded much energy. He was like a magnet, the meteorite, drawing everybody that needed to be in that particular shop in order to get the crystals that they needed to do to energize them. So we are telling this one and giving her the image of an ever-ready battery. The stones, the rocks, the gems are like an ever-ready battery. They hold so much energy and they've come here to work not only with humanity, but with the earth itself and the earth crust for they are part of the crust itself. So there needs to be a lot more reverence and we don't mean in worship, but in to revere something, to hold something with a full heart. These stones can be worked with, for they are healing tools. They are information tools. There is much that still needs to be discovered and learnt about the stones. So we say, when next your reader or your listener wants to have a question answered, still themselves, go into the point of stillness and go and sit on a rock, next to a rock, place your hands on it, ask to feel its energy, ask for an energy exchange, ask for the wisdom of the ages, to be transmitted into your cell structure. And there's this one holds her hands up. We are pulsing through her. And it is as if she is receiving Morse code. And that it is how it comes in. It comes in, in waves but the stone structure is structured in such a way that it holds information for centuries and soon 
on your earth plane with the earth movement that is yet to come, you will discover and behold magnificent stone structures. There is yet more to learn. Thank you so much. And it's something that I um, personally have believed for a long time. You know, we'll see something that's shared on social media about um, one turtle that's wrapped up in plastic. And yes, it's not ideal that we use plastic in the earth and the way we abuse plastic. But then that goes viral. Um, and I always say, but there are there must be so much underneath the ocean that we have not even discovered yet. And you've come from the ocean. You're sharing us that there was, there's, there's, I mean, is it even possible that humanly possible for us to get to the depths of what's lying underneath the ocean? As Because we always hear the, the referencing of as above, so below. So I think you're smiling because I think that's kind of like you gifted me that in that moment. <laughs> and... It brings me back to the the fact that as humans, we just somehow seem to love the chaos. We seem to love the suffering. We seem to love the 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 um. Hum, hum, I want to use the words humanely, like like it's like the main event. And a part of my question is, we've been waiting for this main event to happen. And, and I know that this is how come Jill and myself are, are here right now. We've been guided to put this together. And what is the main event? Do we even need to know what, do, hum, do, hu, do we as humanity need to know what that main event is? Because we know that there's a flip. There's a flip that's happening. So sorry, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent because I've got like 20 different questions that I want to ask right now. But let's start with, the ocean and what lies within the ocean. Oh, you're smiling because we showed her above and below. And the question was, what is there? What is still there in the ocean that needs to be discovered? And we say, look up into the night sky, look above. And what is there still to be discovered? Have you discovered everything mm -hmm. that's in the night sky? And you haven't even touched on everything that's there. And therefore, you haven't even touched on everything that is below. Mm. But you are the main event. You, you are the event. And what are you doing with your event? This life that has been bestowed unto you and to many other, millions and millions. What are they doing with their lives? How are they looking at the above? How are they looking at the below? And how do they fit into either? For they have been below and they have been above. They have been many forms and they have traveled many constellations, and yet here they are now worrying about the main event. We told this one that many were called onto the earth plane at this particular time for the frequencies that they hold. Were you not told that when you went on your visit to Egypt to open up the portal, that the energy that you held within, as you visited certain temples, the energy would be released and it would transmit. And therefore, any traveler that came after you would feel a resonance or an activation occur within. 
And so it is with all the stones on this planet. There are many that are waiting to be activated by the very beings that come from the Stella. For the Stella holds incredible energy and they have come back at this time to the ley lines and to the ancient structures and it's almost like it's a key going into a lock and turning it and we're giving her the visualization of when you were a child and you have a music box and you can turn the key and you can wind it and you can hear the music playing. The music is always there. But unless you put the key in and turn it, you would never know. So every being that is here at this time holds a particular tone and holds a particular key like a piano key, like a tone. So it is their tone that is the key. Do you understand? I do. Um, I feel like saying it's something like, is it, is, it, is it similar to the different colors? Like Jill and I, um, Jill had black on, so I thought, okay, I'll quickly go wear black. Is that how you would, describe the different tones or are you talking about from a soul in a, in, in a on a soul level when we talk about a tone we talk about a vibration okay got you okay is your tone so if do you not do toning with the council of eight i do yes right that is a particular tone this one if she was asked to do the tone would not have the same tone that yeah. emanates from your portal of light Mm -hmm. And you are recognized by your tone and your tone is part of your essence. It's your signature. It is your blueprint. It is who you are. Mm -hmm. So the tones have come to play a tune. Now, their particular tune is going to activate or unlock or open energy lines throughout this earth plane and as that happens there will be a shift there will be a change there will be a lifting in the tempo it'll come to that part of the orchestra when the tempo increases it starts at a certain pace and then it builds and it builds and it becomes a crescendo, does it not? Mm -hmm. So earth at the moment is building to its crescendo. All the tones are getting ready. They are finding themselves. They are meeting one another to play particular tunes with each other. And as they tune in and tone with each other, it is like a network. It is like a woven basket. And we've spoken to before of them being links on a chain. So whether you want to call it links on a chain, whether you want to call it a woven basket or an alignment, we are getting everybody lined up. We are introducing those to each other who need to be introduced. There were many introductions made to the beings that went to Egypt and they in turn have met many others and they are not the same beings that went into Egypt as came out of Egypt because a new resonance had been set, a new tune, a new symphony. So there are many orchestras being played, many symphonies being played 
on your earth plane at the moment. And it is for us, the conductors, to get all the music to play together so that it's not a cacophony, but that it's beautiful. But there are those who call themselves leaders on your earth plane that don't want the music to be beautiful. They want it to be a cacophony because that way it's unsettling and it's jarring and people don't know which path to follow. But when the tune is beautiful, when the melody flows, so do the people. So it's time for each one to ask themselves, what tune is it that I wish to play? Who do I wish to play with? What song do I wish to record? What is it that is going to be in my storybook? Do not worry about another, but rather, as some say, do not die with the music still in you, with the song that still needs to be sung. Do you understand the thread of where we are going? I most certainly do. Which leaves me with another hundred different questions. <laughs> so with this thread, uh, and, I, and I, I feel it's important to, to go back to the activations and what Egypt and how Egypt, in a, in, from a vibration, from a frequency, from a thread, uh, gifts to all of us. What's interesting, though, and this is what, what I would love to ask, is in my understanding of energy, it's you know, we went into the into the uh, the pyramid. We all received what we received. We felt the essence of the energy. Yet when we came out, the human story seemed to continue for months and months afterwards, and they're just stories. But yet the activation. I mean, I'm sitting here and I feel like I can feel that energy infused in my cells once again. So. There seems to be something with humans that humans want to still hurt other humans. And my question to you is that when we are dissolving or working with energy, there's no need, is there, to be able to say things to others that are hurtful. We can just dissolve it inside of, like we can we can work with the emotion, we can work with the body of water, and and it's done, isn't it? One hurts another when one doesn't feel enough. And if the one that receives the hurt doesn't feel enough, then they will hurt back. Mm. And so it is a boomerang. But if one needs to hurt another, sometimes it is done on purpose and sometimes it is just done. How the other receives the hurt, though, is how the mastery lies within. Why would one be hurt by what somebody else says? Unless one believes it at one's core. So what is it that one believes of oneself, and that is why we say, know thyself, who are you? What are you? You're a light traveler, traveling through time and space, coming to have an experience, coming to help the earth at this particular time, and yet you forget who you are, this brilliant being, the sparkling body of light. 
And so, as you forget that you are light, you then embrace the dark. Are we showing her the moon? You see the moon sometimes, it's full. Sometimes it's half. Sometimes it's just a fraction, a little sliver. And yet it is still the moon. And while the moon is full for you, somebody else might see it differently. And it is the same for humans. One human will think you fantastic, absolutely fabulous. Yet another will see you in a different way. For they are coming and looking at you through their eyes of all the hurts that have happened to them. And you humans use a word called trigger. And so they are triggered and they blame another for them being triggered. Oh, they triggered me. And yet we explain to this one, nobody triggers you. You either decide to allow yourself to get involved in the drama or not. But you might notice the older you get, the less drama you get embroiled in. For with years of experience, you realize you don't have to be reactive anymore. There is no rule that says you have to give an answer that red hot minute. So you just wait and you observe yourself observing the situation and we say it is a much better place to come from and when one can be the observer one sees that it is nothing but a play a script a movie line so what part is it that you wish to play. Mm, that's a great, like I just saw, and cut, you know, like a director's script and, and take two. Uh, and that's a beautiful way of putting it. And it's always so fascinating for me when, you know, just in the learnings of life, and yes, you're correct that as the older we become, the more or less we feel, I call it the knee jerk reaction that, that we. We do not have to dive into it. We don't have to dive into the story. Uh, but it is fascinating how I was saying to my husband the other day, all of a sudden we've got this context of different words called gaslighting, passive aggressive, because that's what I was going to ask. I was like, okay, well, you, we choose not to get involved in the drama, but then you labeled passive aggressive <laughs> or you labeled something because, well, and, and I just, it's like water for ducks back, you know, it's, it's, isn't that the learning is going, okay, well, are you feeling the contraction or are you holding space and sending love to the person who is projecting if it feels like they're projecting onto you? But there's all these labels that come with us as humans. And I feel like sometimes it doesn't serve us, all these labels, all these different words that make us feel something. It will serve you until it doesn't. And so you will true. play the game until you decide that's not the game you wish to play anymore. There are many games that you play on earth. Which ones do you wish to play? The ones that uplift you mm -hmm. or the ones that pull you down? The ones that uplift others or pull them down? All is a choice. Always a choice. And thank you for sharing this wisdom. So something that I um, that I was given as a wording, and it was shared to me three times, and Jill had something very similar in Peru. And this was shared with me last week. Uh, the serpent is rising. And it was said very distinctly three times. I don't know where it came from. Uh, Jill had something very similar. I can't remember the exact words right now when she was in Peru. Could you explain to us if there is a meaning behind this and if it meant anything? 
we are showing her wisdom. We are showing her myself, Sekhmet. And there's a large snake as my symbol at my feet. And this is the wisdom, the feminine rising. The feminine, they can be the warrior or the peacemaker. The feminine, they can rage or can rest. And it is time for the feminine to rise. And three times she was told, the serpent is rising, the serpent is rising, the serpent is rising. And then the serpent has risen. Once the serpent rises, you can't put it back in the box. There is so much feminine, what we term mystery, that is yet to be revealed. How is it possible that a woman can be so strong and yet so weak, so angry and yet so gentle? so loving and yet so filled with hate, wanting to destroy and yet creating life. And the very fabric of womanhood on earth at the moment is being questioned. You have many pronouns that are now popular. And yet we say, Whatever it is that somebody wishes to identify as still doesn't make them that being. Sometimes it is fantasy land. But we say there is a certain part in humanity at the moment that are constructing we were going to say constructively, but they are not being constructive. They are being destructive. They are trying to destabilize the feminine rising. And what better way than distraction when there are so many on your earth plane that are unable to define what a woman is? If you had to ask them what a pineapple was, or a shoe, or a tree, that is something that does not change. A shoe is something that goes on the foot. A pineapple is something that you eat, a yellow delicious fruit. A tree gives you oxygen, and it can be fruit or flowers and give you shade. That doesn't change. And what it is to be a woman does not change either. But they are trying to redefine and cause division. Will you allow this? Or will you stand up and find your voice? Women are now saying, no more. We have been marginalized for too long. And I, Sekhmet, am the warrior. I am the disruptor. It is time for disruption. It is time for truth telling. For when the feminine rises, the masculine will rise to meet it and complement it. For the 
feminine has what we term laying low. For many, many centuries, you think you are a modern woman, and yet you do not allow your voice to be heard. There are many in this current day and age that have to hide their faces, hide their bodies, and hide their voices. But a serpent has risen. And it will slither across your earth plane with its wisdom. It will gather women from every nook and every cranny. And you will unite. You will reunite of old and celebrate all that it is to be able to create a new life and bring it forth. Well, this is the birthing of a new era where all will be equal for all were created equal and yet you are experiencing a different experience for is it not different to be a woman in New Zealand as in Saudi Arabia or Africa or India. Mm -hmm. And so we say that is the difference. And yet are you not all women? Mm -hmm. So it is time for what is termed sisterhood to reach out and support those who cannot support themselves for fear of recrimination. Why, we ask the question, are so many of you silent? Why are you not speaking out for all the women in the world that have been so marginalized? How can you worry about a big event when you haven't even extended a hand of friendship? There is much that many women can do. Do not ever underestimate the power of millions of women coming together. Mm. Thank you for that, Sehmed. Sure, that felt incredibly powerful and strong. And is that perhaps not, not the reasoning of why, yet I know there's many platforms, many different countries that we've been shown that um, will perhaps not disintegrate, but will change, will shift in their frequency, will shift in their, in their vibration, where they have been ruled and dominated by men. Uh, Mesopotamia, I keep getting, I know you mentioned Mesopotamia at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about Mesopotamia and what, what was the energy like then? It was beautiful. It was peaceful. It was calm. There was great wisdom shared. All were equal. Children were loved. They were treasured. The family unit was extremely important. And yet, an entire village raised a child. So each child felt loved, honored, and respected. And because they were honored, loved, and respected, they grew up to be honorable, loving, and respectful to the other. 
There were great debates. There were great oracles. The wisdom came through interstellar. And they were able to travel in their Merkabahs, in their vehicles of light, backwards and forwards. It was a true age of enlightenment. Hmm. Is that where we're heading towards? A different is, age of enlightenment? What is it that you choose? Mm. Speaking of which, I know there's a very important election that's up and coming. And I know that you're a true speaker, as is Jill and myself. Uh, this up and coming election in America. How do you see, what's the guidance for anyone that's listening to this today? I know everybody has the right to choose whoever they choose. I suppose my question is, is this going to be a good choice for the rest of the world, for humanity, whoever the president is going to be? We see disruptions. But if any event takes place, how does one react to it? Do you decide to grow through it? Or do you decide to contract? Those that have come and playing the part of the nominees have made a contract. The contract was to play the part that they are playing at the moment. And you are the audience. What does the audience wish to see? Who does the audience wish to cheer? Which storyline does the story listener listen to? Why do they listen to a particular storyteller, a nominee, and favor a nominee over another? What has happened in their lives, in their circumstances, that they wish one to win over another? And how good is it if one wins and the other one doesn't? When last did they truly work together? For when they don't work together, there are no winners. But it is time for humanity to grow up, to start working together. And the disruption needs to come for them to take stock. But how much destruction will take place in order for them to take stock, in order for humanity to wake up, will reside in each and every one. Every single person has a choice in everything that they do each day, how they react or how they don't react. And so this will play out exactly the way it is meant to in order for systems to crash so that humanity can rise above. Thank you for sharing that, Sekhmed. Is there anything else that we've, you feel is is important for us to hear today. We know that this is a continuous book of work or a workbook. Is there anything for anybody listening that you feel will be important to end off today? 
we'd like to speak about um, expansion and contraction. Please do. What is it that is contracting you? And where do you feel expansion or what do you wish to expand? We'd like all those reading or listening to make a list of what it is they wish. And let them observe what those wishes are. And let them ask themselves, what are they doing to expand? And what are they doing to contract? Who are they contributing for someone else's expansion? And who are they contributing to someone else's contraction? It is a time for honesty. It is a time for deep diving. And there is no right. There is no wrong. There is either growth or stagnation. This is not a competition. This is not a race. But we would like everyone to get the magnifying glass out and really look at themselves. For when they concentrate on the joy, there will be fewer disruptions. Mm, amazing. Thank you so much for your words today, your words of wisdom. We're very appreciative. Um, one last, what would you like to call it, call this chapter, please? Observing self. Wonderful. Thank you, Sekhmi. Thank you for all your wisdom. Thank you for sharing, showing up. We are incredibly honored and appreciative for everything that you are gifting us. With that, Jilly, thank you. With that, Jilly, please start wriggling your toes, coming back down to us. Back to life. Back, Back to, to reality. reality. <laughs> <laughs> how was that for you? Wow, it was incredible how I uh, actually, even before you started, started seeing the interstellar under the water and all the um, the buildings underneath. Huge, huge pillars and stones and structures and incredible, actually. There's actually, for any of you watching, there's a beautiful, um, it's, it's, it's uh, I think you and I spoke about it, an AI version of, um, it's almost two hours long, like a history of the world. And it, it takes you to Mesopotamia and Athens. And it's so incredible. I mean, there's so much wisdom in it where you go, holy, we, we're just a little glimpse in the rest of life. I think I've got the feeling that what I saw hasn't been discovered yet. Wow. That it's there. But with the earth changes, it'll come up. Well, is that's what they've said, you know, like it's the it's the well well the the, the contraction and expansion. If you just look at metal that contracts and expands, you know, you add heat to it. Yeah. There's fires. I, I believe that there's fires that are happening. There's gonna, you know, I don't say there's going to be, but excuse me, there's just, there's a lot. We, we contract and expand, and it's so true. It's what are we shifting? What are we bringing at the end of the day? And um, I felt so strong when she spoke about, because um, I forgot to ask you before, we, before you went, you know, into hypnosis, 
was your statement also that it was slightly different, I think, the serpent is rising, the serpent is rising. That's what, did exactly you, what they told me the serpent is rising. Was that times. in was it and, and mine mine was something so you see, I had your words, that's interesting, because mine was something the snake is rising or and I, I just remember I spoke to you about it a week ago and, and I said to you, this is what I saw three times. Please. But I used your words, the serpent is rising, because that's what I remember to be. And it happened at three o'clock in the morning. Wow. In Peru. Sure. And it felt strong when she when she accessed that. I was like, whoa, I could just feel my heart going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like I felt like giving out a woo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she like, came through really strong. She was so strong about the woman of the world. She actually said to me, wonderful woman of the world. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Incredible. I'm so we excited. Need to support each other. 100%. You know, the faction fighting doesn't get us anywhere. We know that. No. It doesn't get us anywhere. And that is why the I... People divide us. Don't let anything divide us. I, you're yeah, right, but th that's why I feel like these sessions are so important because, well, not I feel, I know, because, um, you know, there's so much SH1T that's been shared and spread out there, you know, and and it's just like, how many more words do we need in the English language to affect one another? Like, seriously, how much and, more? And ourselves. And ourselves, absolutely. So, you know, I just roll with what comes to mind. And I mean, there really is like a hundred questions in one. And I'm like, how do I articulate that? And how do I articulate that? And anyway, and then it just rolls off as in, as in how it's meant to. But I'm so excited for, for her sharing and what she's sharing, because I can see more and more why this is such an integral time to bring this together. Because do you remember, do you remember when we were riding on the bus in Egypt, and I remember we were riding in Luxor, and the and the Nile was on the left hand side. I I don't think you you were, you were sitting next to me, but there was a um, I remember seeing uh, a beautiful lady in a pink uh, what what's the uniform they wear? Is it it's not a bindi? Is it a bindi? What know. are they? What do the ladies wear? Where, where I, don't they, uh, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it's forgive me for not knowing, but um, I'll quickly uh do some research on it but I remember burkas they have a burka but, the, but some of them only also wear the head thing with the equation. yes but you only see the eyes you yeah. know and um so that's right a burka but I, I don't know if it's a, a, the all-in-one but I remember she had this beautiful salmon pink color on and I remember connecting eyes with her because I was sitting at the uh, um on the bus and by the window and we just connected and our eyes just met and our, our hearts just met and I saw her smile through. I mean, I think you had similar experiences, didn't you? I loved looking out the bus and actually looking at life because as we went along that Nile, every now and then there was like a little road across, like a bridge. That's right. That's how I saw. Yes. yes. And you'd see the children and you'd see the old people and you'd see people standing on the side and chatting and yes. waiting for things and trading. and Yes, yes. That was real life. Yes. And th that, uh, everything you're saying is so true. And I was speaking to, um, my God, who was I speaking to? Hold on, I'll come back in. Gosh. Oh, I was speaking to a gentleman yesterday, a lovely, lovely guy, Dan. And Dan was sharing with me how there's such a difference between the Western world and the Eastern world. And, you know, the, the Western world is where we want it so much. There's so much ego. We've got to have more. The Eastern world was very and have always been enlightened. So they're way out there in their, in their knowing and and because we were talking about the, the differences with, e um, with not with Egypt, with India, and, you know, how there can be this perception that there's a lot of suffering, a lot of poverty in Egypt, which we know that there is. And, um, but he was just saying how there's, that's what we're trying to bring in the balance between the two. And imagine if the East meets, meets West. And properly, and really complements each other, and lets each other allow to be with, without any harm. Yeah. To yeah. anyone. So if somebody wants to wear a burqa and they're super, super happy, 
and they're not being abused, who am I to judge? Absolutely. But if there is one that is being told what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and being abused, then that doesn't sit well within me. But yet, on the Western society, there are women being beaten up all the time and abused. So, and men. And men. And men. Yes, and men. Yeah. Yeah. Just for this conversation, because she was talking about women, I just was comparing it with women. Yeah, absolutely. So, I understand. You know, we all came, as Sigmund said, to experience what we came to experience and play the part. And at the end of the day, you have to look in the mirror and say, what is your contribution to it? Yeah. And how are you contributing to yourself? Yeah. Makes such a difference. So, guys, thank you all for being here today. And um, I'm so excited to walk this journey with you, as always. And, uh, Julie, I just love you. Look, and I was thank you for asking the questions because I was nervous about today. I know, right? I really thought. <laughs> but I, 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 I don't know if you could feel it, but holy, like my whole body was vibrating. My, and and I know that even from when you used to hypnotize me, it's like we just go into a different stratosphere, like completely. And um, and now I've got to go ground because then I drive my family mad. <laughs> <laughs> I know, go and have something to eat or something. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to go for a walk on the beach. So. Thanks, Thank guys, you. for being here. Thank you, Jilly. Yeah, it's just such an honor. And Jill and I were saying before we, we started to record and how could you imagine what your life would be like in three years' time or four years' time? And I was complimenting Jill on wearing black, and I didn't have black on, and I just thought, woman in black. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and I changed. <laughs> and I just thought... We're just going to show up, you know, and because it's just. We're going to rock it. <laughs> We're going to rock and roll it. it. <laughs> she's black. She's all she's obsidian. Black. It's stone. Exactly. Oh, there you go. I meant to ask her, like, um, what was the black, you know, acknowledging. But anyway, it was a choice, like she said. <laughs> Don't get so deep, Michelle. Um, <laughs> it's just anyway, is, no, yeah. there's no meaning. No, exactly. Have a beautiful day wherever you are, guys. We love you. Jelly, I love you. And. Thank you for all that you are bringing to our world, to all of you. We're doing this all together. So thank exactly. you, thank you, thank you. Have a beautiful day, guys. Love you. Bye. You guys. Bye.